As somebody who's been involved in uh, our regional politics over the last couple of years, I was very excited to see this talk come in. Uh, Philip James is going to be talking about how to automate your city data with Python. Please make him welcome. Thank you. So thank you all for attending this special session of the North Bay Python Regional Improvement District. Uh, today's session topic is how to automate your city data with Python. I am your appointed district clerk, Philip James. Uh, in lieu of the normal Pledge of Allegiance that we would do for expediency, please do some form of nationalism inside your own heart. We're going to start with some math, just so we have some framing. This is item one. Uh, most of us, most of us who are living in the United States, are going to live in a place that has some sort of city council or township board or alderman, uh, as well as a county board of supervisors. On average, those groups are going to meet twice per month, and so we get, <clears throat> if each of those uh, groups is making five decisions per meeting, which is uh, a little low, but we're being conservative, that's close to the average, then we get to those groups making 20 decisions per month that affect us. And when I say affect us, what does that mean? Those groups are going to decide things like local tax rates, rent control, housing policy, police spending, firemen, fire department spending, library spending, public health policy. You probably see something on that list you care about. If you don't, well, let's add what most of these groups also have, which is committees. Most of these groups are going to have at least three committees shared across city and county. And again, we're, we're pretty low here. If it's just three committees, we're now up to 50 decisions per month. Uh, now we're talking about parks, school spending, education policy, transportation, and that's Still on the low end, you probably now see a couple things you care about affecting you. But really, I'm, I'm sandbagging here. Uh, we're closer to most of these groups having around 10 committees. If it's 10 committees, we're now doing 120 decisions a month that affect your day-to-day -day life in ways that you may not even be aware of. Because now this is things like public art, civil rights, voting rights, historical preservation, city pensions, traffic patterns, street naming. If you don't see something that affects you on this list, please come talk to me, because I'd be very curious about where you live. Uh, and so, as, again, as part of the framing, I'd like to ask item 1.2, do you know your current city council members? Do you know your current county supervisors? Do you know their voting records on rent control and housing? Do you know their voting record on COVID protections? Do you know their voting record on voting rights? Item 1.3, would you like to? So who am I? I am your uh, duly appointed district clerk for this special session. Uh, f five years ago, it feels very weird to be calling this five years ago, I was on this conference stage with my friend Ashish Loria talking about timing attacks in security, not only about Python, but really about how uh, the w timing is an issue that affects security primitives across the apps that we build. I'm also uh, very honored to serve as a fellow of the Python Software Foundation. Uh, I run a small digital studio and management consultancy called the Galaxy Brain. If you're looking for uh, any sort of executive or management or high level career coaching, love to talk to you. And then I'm brought here today by my employer, which is kind of weird to say because I'm CEO of CrowdAlert. Uh, CrowdAlert is a company that is trying to rework how security operations is done, do a very human-centric approach, and we'd love to talk to you if you feel overwhelmed by your current set of alerts and think there must be a better way. We have it. Please come talk to me. So we're going to answer the questions that I posed earlier. Good news, this data does exist. It's in very weird formats. It's in very weird places, and that is a combination of accident and design, as we will get to. <clears throat> Let's talk about where it comes from. So a clerk, like myself, will start each meeting by putting together an agenda. Normally, this is in collaboration with whoever is the elected representatives or the appointed representatives of the committee or the commission, and they will figure out what are the items that we want to talk about for the next meeting and publish that agenda multiple days before the meeting, very much like a conference. The meeting happens. It can take anywhere from 10 minutes to, I think, the longest Alameda City Council meeting clocked in at six hours, starting at 7 p.m. Uh, yeah, rent control is a fun issue to talk about in the Bay Area. Uh, during that meeting, minutes are taken. The clerk puts together a PDF of all of the minutes. Normally, the minutes talk about high-level discussion items. Uh, they, they are kind of filling in the gaps on the agenda. They will say who brought up what pieces of information. They will 
monitor the voting record, which brings its own interesting set of challenges that we can get into. It is not, almost ever, a full transcript of the meeting. In the modern era, a lot of meetings are recorded or put on Zoom, and so there are people that are trying to get full transcripts of civic government meetings. But minutes are not that, they are a summary of what happened at the meeting. The clerk, or someone in the clerk's office, will upload that PDF and the meeting details to a piece of legislative management software called Legistar, uh, or there's a related ones called Granicus. If you don't, you've never heard these terms, that's fine. That's why we're all here today. And then, it just sits there, often. We're here. We are sitting on top of, all of us, a massive trove, a huge collection of data about how our local governments are run, who's making the decisions, and what kind of decisions they're making. And they mostly sit in PDFs that are, let's generously call them write-only documents. Uh, so before we really dive in, uh, item 3.3, let's do a brief note on legality. I am not a lawyer. I am not currently offering anything that you should take as legal advice. This is on you. However, this data is public. It belongs to you because it's your government and it's being co compiled by your local government, which is paid for by your taxes. And so, generally speaking, this is public data. However, we are accessing websites. And everyone knows that websites have terms of service and special criteria for how you're supposed to access them. Uh, which is why I say, when in doubt, email the civic body. You will be very surprised and possibly quite pleased that if you're interested in this work and you email your county clerk or your city clerk, they will sometimes just send you, here is a zip file with every PDF that we have generated in the past 20 years. And then you get to skip the whole first section of this talk, which is great. Uh, we are going to be talking about how to build an API via website scraping, and scraping is not illegal. The Ninth, Court of, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled so, uh, and they have affirmed that decision in multiple cases. Again, see that first item, I am not a lawyer, but you're, we're talking about public data hosted by your city governments that you are using for more or less private purposes, even if you put it on the internet. <clears throat> so what is the goal? The goal is to get this civic data into a normalized, searchable, queryable form. Now, if that sounds like we're trying to put it in a database, congratulations, we're trying to put it in a database. And we're going to use two primary tools to do that. The biggest tool that we're going to be using in terms of making our lives easier is a tool called Dataset. Actually, quick show of hands. Who here has not heard of Dataset? This is not shame. Oh, I'm so happy I get to teach you all. This is so great. This is fantastic. Dataset is a fabulous piece of software. Um, I, uh, I, I will not necessarily call out the creator, but if the creator wants to wave their hand. OK, th thank you. Uh, <laughs> Dataset was created by Simon Willison, who's in the audience today. Dataset is a fabulous piece of software that makes your life and all of our lives much easier if you're dealing with any sort of data, because what Dataset is is a fabulous web interface that can be run locally or hosted on the internet that sits on top of SQLite databases. And it is, that may seem like a simple premise, but it is 90% of what you want if you're trying to do data analysis from very small data sets all the way up to, I think I've seen that Simon has run it on multiple hundred gigabyte data sets for LLM training models. It is a fabulous tool, and we're going to be talking about it more later. And of course, we're going to use Python. Dataset is written in Python. The dataset plugins are written in Python. And we are here to talk about Python. Let's talk about technique, item 4.3. ETL is an acronym that gets thrown around a lot in our industry. We're going to break it down because it's a very useful way of talking about what we're going to be doing here. It stands for extract, transform, and load. Extract, the data lives somewhere, and you want it to live somewhere else. Transform, the data is in a format we can't do much with. We're going to put it in a form we can do something with. Load. Let's get it where we need it so that we can actually do the analysis we want. The reason we're breaking things down this way is because we want to take a divide and conquer approach to this problem. If you try to solve the entire problem of getting this data out of the government websites and into a form and queryable, you could very easily end up extremely frustrated about like, wait, what step am I on and how did I get here and what's the next debugging step? So we're going to break this into chunks which is also going to help us, not just for debugging, but for when we talk about how to deploy this later. So extract, what are we trying to do? We want to get this data out of the civic body website. 
which means we want a folder of PDFs, because that's where this data kind of natively lives right now, with some easily derived date data so we can associate it with meeting dates. What do we have? We have Python. We need an API. And spoiler, there are not, for most municipalities, for most civic bodies, there are not easy APIs for this. So we're going to have to figure out, we're going to have to do a tiny bit of scraping and reverse engineering to figure out how to get an API that we can actually use. Uh, so uh, in accordance with the North Bay Python Regional Improvement District uh, meeting guidelines, we are not going to do a live demo. After that incident with the pig, we have a standing rule against live demos. Uh, so instead, we are going to do a uh, pre-recorded demo that I will show you now. We're going to start by going to Google. We're going to the City of Petaluma website, because we're in Petaluma, and so we should try to figure out what's going on with the Petaluma City government. This is a pretty standard civic body website, and we notice that there's this thing called meetings. That looks promising. Here on this meetings page, we see a bunch of listings for when meetings happen. OK, this is looking good. Here's a list of upcoming meetings. OK, but we don't want upcoming meetings. We want the archives, because we're trying to see what happened, not what is going to happen. OK, great. Here we have a list of archived meetings. Now, what we want out of this is we want to see a bunch of them, and we want to get the minutes. Right? The agendas don't help us. We need the voting records. We need to know what happened. And we see, if we go by city council, and we uh, go back in time, we see, OK, here's an agenda. That's great. But an agenda is not exactly what we're looking for. But you can see the form of it here. It's kind of laying out, here's what we're going to talk about. Instead, we want the minutes. I do not know why the Petaluma City Council has not posted minutes since May 1st. <laughs> but we're going to click the minutes. And notice that you probably can't see it very well. We're going to open this in a new tab. And the reason for that is this URL, which I know you probably can't see super well, this URL is going to be very important. This is going to form the basis of our API. But we're going to click this and see, like, OK, are the minutes the sort of thing that we want to be looking at? Does this look correct? Yes. And you can see it's talking about resolutions. It's talking about who voted yes and who voted no. OK, this is looking very promising. This is probably what we want in our database. OK, so we have a URL for where these things live. Now we need to figure out if that URL is a repeatable pattern that we can turn into something like an API. Uh, and I will post these slides somewhere with the video so that you can see this in more depth. I'm walking you through my process because in many ways, the Python is more straightforward. Figuring out how to get the data is the tricky part. Uh, so you see that we have this long URL here. It's got this template ID. That looks promising. Let's see if, we can, if that template ID changes with every uh, instance of the minutes, it was 5221, and it's 5239. Okay, that's looking really promising. But I want to make certain that we are actually getting the correct API, because this is going to form the basis of how we pull all those PDFs. And so this is where I'm going to do something a little interesting and go into the Chrome DevTools. It works the same on, I'm sorry, this is. Uh, you know, this is the Chrome DevTools. It works the same on Firefox, to be clear. Um, and I don't care super about the source, except to notice that this is an iframe where these meeting archives are. And this is going to be pretty common for most of the civic bodies you look at. They're going to be rehosting an iframe from whoever is the actual uh, legislative tracker provider. Uh, I have a weird typo here, so let's try this again. And if I go to this URL, the hosted iframe URL, I see basically the same view. This is great. This means that if I want to skip the website exterior, I can go straight here in the future and check, hey, are my results correct? Awesome. But I want to really make sure that I know what's happening here. And so in the inspector, I'm going to go look at the network tab specifically. The network tab is great. If you haven't used this before, this is how you can build an API out of basically any site that doesn't have an API. Notice that I'm focusing on this fetch XHR. I don't really care about JavaScript or HTML loading. I care about external requests to other API providers or to other websites. OK, I'm going to reload the page. And cool, look at all of these uh, API fetches that I have. Let's see what's inside of them. Uh, notice that I've got a prime gov is what the city of Petaluma uses. I've got a PrimeGov URL that I can use as the basis of my API. And in fact, I might look to see if PrimeGov has an API. And not really. Uh, it is interesting to note 
based on my searching, that uh, PrimeGov is also used by the city of Los Angeles. That's kind of neat. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's an easily available public API for PrimeGov. That's pretty common. And as a side note, uh, each city can kind of choose the features they turn on for these legislative trackers. And it is very possible that a API feature that might exist on the platform hasn't been turned on by the city. This is interesting, by the way. What I just found, this is the list of committees. This might be useful later for tagging the data with the correct committee name. Uh, but it's not quite what I'm looking for. I'm looking for, yes, here we go, list archive meetings. And if I scroll down, I see, OK, there's the agenda. This is looking good. It's got a template ID. This is what I would expect. I want to know, does this have minutes? Yes, it does. OK, now we're in business. Now, even though there isn't an officially published API, we have an API that we can use to get access to these minutes PDFs. If I change to one of the responses that I got from the API that I just found, do I get a minutes document? Yes, I do. OK, we are doing so well. This process is very similar to what you're going to do, what I've done for the civic governments that I've started tracking. It's very similar to what you're going to do for your city or for your county when you hopefully go home and do this for yourselves. OK, so we now have an API. Uh, Ta-da! We haven't really extracted it, though. Let's do the actual extraction. Here's some kind of rough pseudo Python code. With that API, you're going to start with a list of bodies, which again, we could use that other API we found, or we could just hard code it if we know there's a limited number of bodies. For year and years, because if you notice that URL we were using did a kind of per year selector. And then for page and pages, because we're going to have multiple pages off of that API response, we're going to get the meeting list, we're going to get the matching documents, and then we're going to save those PDFs into a folder that contains all of those documents with, you'll notice here, a date stamp as the file name. Uh, one of the fun things about Unix is file names are metadata. And if you, don't, if you know what the PDF is, because it's in a folder with the body name, the path is metadata. Right? So I am, use, I am hacking file names as here's how I'm going to get the date data for the meeting that I'm looking at. And I'm going to end up with something like this, a folder full of folders where each folder inside the folder has uh, a committee or a, a meeting body attached to it, and inside those are PDFs. OK, transform. Wow, I really got to speed up. Uh, uh, we're going to turn those PDFs into DB insertable text. Uh, we need a folder of text files with some easily derived date data. We have Python. We do not have a tool for turning PDFs into text. One side note, separation of concerns. My goal and your goal should be to be recoverable and usable at every step. We're starting with PDFs. We're going to end up with text files. That's still not the database, but it means that we can check on those text files, hey, does this look correct, before we're loading a database. We're going to use two things to get uh, text files out of this out of these PDFs. We're going to use FITS, which is actually a package as part of PyMoo PDF. I think there's been some weird kind of package renaming and ownership over the past couple of years. That's going to turn our PDFs into PNGs of pages. And then we're going to use Tesseract, which is something from Google, that's going to do OCR on those PNGs of pages. Now, this technique is actually borrowed from a technique that I originally got from Simon. In that version, which is how I started, they, th that version uses an AWS service which does OCRs on PDFs or images inside an S3 bucket. We'll see why that got prohibitively expensive for one of the government bodies that we're going to be looking at. And so I now do this locally first using Tesseract, and so I'm, you'll see in a second. Uh, transform for body and bodies for document meetings, open the document, and export a PNG of each page. And then OCR those PNGs into text by shelling out to Tesseract. This is not the complete code. If you would like the complete code, I have it, and I'm happy to share it later. Feel free to send me an, e feel free to send me an email at the official district clerk email down there. Uh, quick side note, isn't this slow? Uh, whenever someone says, isn't this slow, the first question you should ask, maybe more politely, should be, compared to what? Uh, this is not a real-time application. We're not hosting. You don't have to do this full process every time somebody goes to visit the database. This is loading data into the database. This is why you pull your ETL outside of your application so that you can do that separation of concerns. Um, also, you can use Sentinel values to track how far you've gone in the set so you're not having to redo the set every time. At the same time, this process should be idempotent, right? If you want to start from scratch every time, you can, and you should get the same results every time. OK. We now have a tool for turning PDFs into text. We have done so. Let's load it. 
making the data query and searchable. We need a database of all our civic meeting data. We have Python, and we have Dataset. We're basically done here. Um, I've already talked about Dataset. Dataset is amazing. Come talk to me or Simon about Dataset. Uh, it's Great. It's, it's maybe the best software for data analysis that I've used in the past three years. It's got a rich plugin community. We're just going to keep moving. This is the actual code for creating and then uh, setting up the database that we're going to be loading data into. The real magic here is that enable FTS down at the bottom. That's going to let us do full text search over the text field that we're creating in this database, which is going to become very useful soon. Uh, this is the actual code for loading that text into the database. You start up the dataset server on your local machine, and you get something cool like this. This is what I did off of Berkeley. You probably can't see it. I know it's a little small. 56,951 pages of Berkeley City Minutes. That's why it was going to be way too expensive to do this on AWS. Um, cool. We have this. What can we do with it? So first of all, we can see how many bodies are we going over. This is Berkeley again. 66 distinct bodies that we're going over in the city of Berkeley. We can then see, OK, per body, how many pages of documents are we talking about? And you might not be surprised to see that city council is the highest at 42,000 pages of city minutes. Berkeley is a unique case that I'm using because they have been very good at digitizing all the way back. And so you get things like, again, I don't know if you can see this. Um, this is from 1941, and this is someone speaking to the Berkeley City Council. Let our intelligentsia quit quibbling as to whether ours is a democratic or republican form of government. Academic debate on such matters may be justified in a period of international tranquility, but not when the world is in flames. This is someone asking the Berkeley City Council to censure Germany during in 1941 for World War II. This is some of the stuff that you can find if you really go deep on digitizing your city documents. Or you could find, when's the first time that the word transgender was ever brought up in your city governments, and what was the response of your elected officials at that time? Uh, so 1997, by the way, was the first time the word transgender was ever captured in city minutes for the city of Berkeley. Deploying is part of, is part of what makes Dataset fun. There are two very easy deploy targets for Dataset right now, Vercel and Fly.io. It is literally one line. You give it your login credentials. You do one line for the deploy, and you are done, which means we can hook this into GitHub Actions very easily. If the city data is small enough, you can just put all the city data into GitHub. If it's not, you can put it into S3. And again, you're not doing the full set every time you run GitHub. You're doing increments. So though my pipeline here is to do the full set on my machine and then run the GitHub action to do the increments over time, storing them in S3. And you can do this because you can schedule GitHub actions as a cron. This is a cron that's going to run every hour. Uh, great. Where to go from here? Council Data Project is one of the people that inspired me to do this. They are uh, doing what I was talking about, where they're looking at all of the recorded meetings for city governments. And you can set one up for your city. They're very friendly, and they'd be happy to help. And they're actually doing the full transcripts. So you can search into what people say in your city government data. And then also check out the data set plugins. There's way more that could be done with this data that I'm not doing, and I'd love to hear what you do with it. And you know, really, the sky is the limit from there. So I am over time. Thank you so much for your patience. How much like a city government? Uh, thank you for joining this special session of the North Bay Python Regional Improvement District. I have been your appointed district clerk, Philip James. You are welcome to find me later today, or more likely, find me online. I may have to run to do childcare things, but uh, find me online. I'd love to talk more about this. Hi. Uh, on behalf of the North Bay organizers, uh, we'd like to thank you for not posting a detailed agenda or allowing for public comments. So on behalf of the organizers, I would like to present you with this lawsuit. <laughs>